Welcome back to Desert Ranger. Today I'm going to be building a base to help me survive the Day 7 Horde and I'm going to be showing you guys how you can build this base yourselves on your own servers and world. Now this is a very cheap base design, it costs about 2000 cobble and 2000 wood. It really is not too difficult to construct. It won't last you into like Day 70 but it will keep you alive relatively well for the first few weeks in the game. Let's get started with this base build. So the first thing you're going to want to do is clear the area because there's always going to be some zombie who shouldn't be there. And then you're going to want to start digging. We want a 1 by 16 footprint for this build. And we're going to start off by doing a 1 by 5 section and we'll go from there. Need another one. I cannot count to 5. You heard it here first. Right. So you just want to fill this in, five, right, next you want to dig out three on each side at the front of your base. Okay, let's fill those in. Next thing you're going to want to do is reinforce this all the way to however far you want to reinforce it. In my case I'm going to do cobblestone and the reason we're doing that now is because some of these blocks are going to be annoying to reach later. So we want to make sure that we don't have to take out any other cobblestone to come back and reinforce it. So let's start by reinforcing the floor here. Okay, so we have the footprint of the staircase we're going to build to make into our base here. This is going to be a catwalk corridor base combo and it needs a staircase to get up into that catwalk. So you're going to want to bring your staircase at its highest point, four up from the ground. That's five total from if you're coming down under the ground there, so four above the terrain. And that's going to be the ideal height for this build. So we have this and we're also going to want to bring in the stair block. And we're going to put two of these stairs on the sides as well. And then we're going to bring in the corner stairs. But before we do that, we should reinforce this block here, which will become hidden after we do the stairs. That would make sense. And fill that back in. Okay, so we have the frame for the staircase we're going to use to get into the space. We want these staircases to come up on the side so that the zombies have a very easy route to get up the catwalk. Okay, oh, and we got a skill point, which is the reason I am going from wood all the way through to cobblestone rather than just placing cobblestone, by the way. The XP you get from upgrading is pretty, pretty good, especially in the early game here. So I'm going to take my skill point and what was I doing again? Ah, strength. Yeah, let's get it up to three and then I'll do more sexual tyrannosaurus, more minor 69er and maybe some mother load. So what we're going to do now is a six wide catwalk or a six long catwalk yeah six long not wide the reason we want it to be six is the potential for putting blade traps down here in the future this will allow it to be one blade trap here and one blade trap here this is actually a suggestion from one of my viewers on a stream where i built this base and it only had five long they suggested that i should extend out another one and i could fit two blade traps in there and i think that is a decent idea even if i don't really plan on putting blade traps in here it's always good to have the option, and it only costs one more block. So we're going to want to reinforce this pillar here, because if we do this catwalk first, it'll all crumble. This cobblestone will be too heavy for that. Right, so we have our staircase and our catwalk for this base. It's time to make the third section, the corridor part of the base which is going to start with digging out four more blocks at the back here. Fill this in. I again cannot count to four. I'm terrible. Fill it in there. And we're going to need a few more frames. I think I'll probably need like another 150. That should be good. We have plenty more wood, plenty more cobble. Like I said, it'll take about 2,000 of each. I would highly recommend having extra wood so that you can do some cool stuff with wood spikes later on though. So next you want to build this up as essentially a foundation for your corridor base. Oh 
Okay, so now we have the foundation of the corridor in. We need to put the supports for the walls in first and reinforce them before we do anything else because if you forget to put the supports in and reinforce them fully, you could have a bit of a disaster where your walls are too heavy and they break. And that would be a waste of materials. Great, so now it's time to put in the walls. You're going to want to put three high on each side. And again, reinforce this. Okay, now we have the walls. This isn't going to do much right now though, we're going to need to put in a ceiling and reinforce this again. And as a precaution, you're going to want to do a quick pillar up here and you're going to want to make sure that there are two blocks above your doorway because zombies can pile up on each other and if it's only one high, they will run over the base and they might find a way to come in the back and that's going to make your life harder. So the next thing we need is some hatches, specifically about four, and you'll also need about four iron hatches as well. I'm going to need more iron if I'm going to fully reinforce these, but that is fine. So when you're placing your hatches, you're going to want them to be hinge outward, like so. See the three hinges at the top? Let me see if I can look at them. Almost. Yeah, you want that facing out the way, because that's the way it pops open like that. And reinforce those all to metal. The most important one is of course the front one, so do that one first. And it looks like I'm going to have to come back and get more metal, although I have some random forged iron here, I think I got that on the way here, just out of a bag, so maybe I'll scrap this up just to make it so I can reinforce my hatches here fully, but you get the picture, I don't actually have to do it right now. Uh, in previous alphas you would put a plate along the top of this. This is no longer necessary and it actually hinders the base's performance. This base is tested by the way, I've used it multiple times on streams and in my own playthroughs. It will keep you going until about day 21, at which point you're going to want something a bit thicker, something that can withstand a higher brunt of force from the zombies. But this will do you for the first couple of weeks. Fundamentally, this is all you need for this base. You stand two trapdoors back and you just hit or shoot. It's fine, doesn't matter, either or works perfectly well. But there are a few things you're going to want to do to this over the course of its lifespan as you gather a bit more resources to make it a bit more secure. And the first thing you're going to want to do, first and foremost, culture, is thicken out the foundation here. Because when harder zombies start to spawn, they might just randomly start punching this. And over the course of a long horde night, that could break and your whole corridor is going to come crashing down. So your first course of action should definitely be to fill in the foundations. We got another skill point really quickly, I'm just going to deal with this bird. Surprised I actually killed him for once. Right, let's put another point into Sexual Tyrannosaurus. There, so now your foundation is a little bit less shaky, but there's more problems to be solved with this base over time. The next thing you're going to want to do is put a little area on the back here. This will be the foundation of either just the area you use to climb onto the top of the base in case there's vultures, or it can be the foundation of the rest of the base if you want to extend this into a bigger base and have this be like your entryway during the, during the general day. Now what you're going to want to do here is some ladders. I prefer the scaffolding ladders. 
and you're going to want to do one and then if i can do that is two zombies will not target this ladder they won't randomly come here and then try and jump onto it it's just not something zombies do zombies will only climb ladders if they're accessible to their feet so for example a zombie will see this one and go ah yes this is fine but a zombie will never jump onto a ladder that's just not something their mechanics do there could be some reality in which zombies are here for some reason and they start to pile up on each other and jump on and for that reason i like to keep my external ladders like this frames just in case it happens i can pull out the ladder and it falls down and problem is solved now i actually have rank two of parkour so i can just do this i don't need the extra one but you if you're not using parkour will need an extra one down there and we're going to do another one here. Again, you'll want that to be two. And then like so. Again, you'll want this to be two if you don't have parkour. And you're going to want to climb up. And the next part of your base is going to be the biggest problem you're going to face. And that is vultures. This base has basically no countermeasures against vultures. Aside from just thickening the roof. And putting some spikes or turrets or traps or whatever up here. And hoping for the best. Okay, so I'm also just going to make sure I reinforce all my hatches here. It's good XP, and these are your main line of defense against the zombies. The cobblestone is basically just here to make sure they come here, rather than attack everywhere else. And I'm out of iron again. Interesting, right. I also want to put a door here, and the reason I want to put a door here is so that if this base is being used at the same time as cops start spawning, this will stop the cops even trying to shoot you, you'll be fine. This will cover your back and you won't have to worry about it. It'll also stop spider zombies from trying to jump up the back if they happen to run along here and see you. They may try and do a jump to land next to you and get up into the back of your base and that could be annoying as hell if they do spawn behind you. I'm going to take one of these ladders because I forgot I extended the roof here. Copy the shape and there we go. And also I only need like one right? Yeah so I'm good. This ladder is going to protect you from cops but if you're still using this base design by the time cops come, yikes, but you, you can do it, definitely. I've done it before. This base is expandable, but you may want to just start with a new framework entirely once that kind of area of the game comes around. You'll probably want to move your horde base at some point in the game anyway when you find the big city on your map with all the tier 5 POIs that you'll want to loot and build a new one there. So, there is one more thing missing from this base, and that is... The countermeasures to the destroy area mechanic. In Seven Days to Die, when a zombie falls, they go into a mechanic called destroy area, where for about 10 seconds, they'll just try and attack the closest block randomly like this. And they'll do this and they'll beat the block up and then they'll go, oh wait, no, wait, I want to kill the player. And they'll get back on their way and they'll try and do that. The fun pimps have graciously given us a bit of a countermeasure. If a zombie falls and then takes damage from something, specifically an entity, they will go out of the destroy area mechanic. And the most primitive way you can do that is with spikes. And we're going to need a lot of them. 40, that seems about right. Uh, let me scrap all these extra frames as well and then I'll make some more. So I'm going to wait for those spikes to craft, which I actually should have started crafting while I was doing the rest of this, but that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to show you where you're going to want to put your spikes to make sure the zombies don't attack random parts of your base. So we have 40 spikes. That was just a rough number. It doesn't actually matter. What you want to do is make sure that if a zombie falls off of this catwalk, they fall into spikes. And that is going to make them take damage and kick them out of the destroy area mode. So this is just a really rough way of doing that. This isn't very precise, there are probably better ways of doing it. The whole point of this base is that it's just a little bit primitive, but it will survive at the first few weeks. I would say quite easily. If you know what you're doing, you have a double barrel shotgun or a pistol or an AK, you should be fine with this base. Even if you're just using a sledgehammer, it'll be good, a club should be good, knives should be good, even a bow should be good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using a crossbow in Horde Knight though, they're very slow. And the last thing we're going to use our spikes on here is the roof. This is going to be the most simplified vulture defense system 
you can make. Essentially, the vultures are going to want to try and get on top of you and you're going to be standing in this middle row. So if we just cover the middle row, a bunch of spikes, I misplaced one there, it should spike them. Now, if you do hear vultures getting through your spikes or they're maybe not going for the spikes, maybe they're trying to go diagonally, just come at the back of your base, obviously keep your trapdoors up, you know, bang, 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 ah, zombies, oh, I hear vultures, really quickly, just jump up onto the back and shoot them. It's not too much of a big deal. The zombies aren't suddenly going to break through four layers of your defences. This is an early game base design. You can get away with things like that. And later in the game, you can build a good base. And the resources you'll save on not crafting some big elaborate base early on will allow you to take your new base out to where you actually want to live, say, the wasteland for better loot. Which is a good idea, by the way, because the wasteland is going to give you a loot bonus, so when you get those loot bags, you'll get better loot in them. So having a horde base in the wasteland is a good idea. Now this whole series is exclusively desert biome, if you're new to it, that's the whole point of Desert Ranger, so I don't have to worry about that really. But this base is going to let me just basically be very lazy for the next few weeks, I don't have to do much horde base building. And then later on, once I've got all my perks and stuff, I can come back and make a really good big base. If you want to see this tested, you'll have to come back for episode number 7, which will be in a couple of weeks probably, because that's how this series is running. It might be out by now if you're watching this in the future. If not, sorry. Anyway, this is part of a series, and we have other things to be doing. So if you came along just for the Horde base build, that's it. This is all you need. Remember to upgrade it to concrete at some point, and remember, don't upgrade your hatches too early, otherwise the zombies won't go for the hatches. So keep those away from vault hatches until this base is made out of steel if you're gonna go that far. Wouldn't recommend it though. What's up guys, it's Prebuilt from the future here. This video was plagued by audio issues with my new microphone, so I thought I would cut it short here and save you having to deal with any more of that horrible clippy audio. After this I did a tier 3 fetch job and got some bandages, and then I did a tier 3 clear job and I got some military gloves, and then I did another tier 3, but Trader Hugh closed before I could get it done. It wasn't too interesting and the audio was terrible, so I thought I'd just cut my losses and make a reasonable horde base tutorial out of this, and move on to episode number six where I'm gonna try and complete all the tier three jobs I need to unlock tier four by day seven because that could give me some really good stuff on day seven like a pump action shotgun for example. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Desert Ranger.